1 Timothy chapter number 4. Begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. But refuse profane and old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. For bodily exercise profiteth little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having promise of the life that now is, and of that which is to come. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do bless your holy name that we're not in some dead religion. God, we're thankful we can have a relationship with you through the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, we are certainly grateful and we are certainly uh, thrilled to be able to come to the house of God tonight. Now, Lord, as we assemble tonight, we know there are many sick, there are some traveling. And of course, Brother Josh, is, uh, with his family, is, uh, they will be burying his father tomorrow. And I pray for that family. You would comfort them. I pray for those that are sick, you would touch them. And I pray for those that are providentially hindered, you'd be with them. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd sit down amongst us and you'd help us from the Word of God. Lord, the entrance of thy Word giveth light and understanding unto all that are in the house. And God, we need wisdom and understanding from thee. Now, Father, I pray for those that are working with the children on the other side of the building. God, you would uh, bless their efforts, and I pray those uh, precious children, uh, Lord, would uh, listen and receive the word of God gladly. And I pray when they reach the age of accountability, that word of God will come to fruition in their heart, and we'd see them trust Christ as Lord and Savior. I pray for those that are working with the teens. You'd bless their efforts as those uh, uh, young people are faced with much peer pressure in these days. And I pray you'd be with them and help them and uh, put a hedge about them and undergird them in truth. Now, Father, meet with us. Speak to our hearts. Help us, Lord, to grasp what thus saith the Lord. Uh, and God, I certainly pray that, Lord, we would lead different than we came in. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. And thank you, most importantly, for being a good God, a good Savior, good friend. And Lord, we just bless your holy name. Help us now. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll thank you for it. For it's in the holy name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. Well, we read several verses, but I want to really focus on the first two verses of this text. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul, who is writing this letter, he's in prison, but he is writing this letter to encourage uh, young Timothy, a young pastor, uh, just starting out in the ministry, to give him some instruction and to uh, uh, share some wisdom with this young preacher so he would uh, understand all that will befall him. I want you to notice, first of all, in verse number one, uh, 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 the season uh, that the Spirit is talking about. He says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times... Uh, can I say, when the Apostle Paul was on the face of the earth, he thought they were living in the last days. Uh, but I want to tell you, when God pinned down uh, this very uh, uh, message uh, that would be uh, 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 given throughout the Bible, throughout the ages, and throughout generations, uh, uh, it was warning us of the day we live in. Uh, we are living in that season. Uh, I believe we're living in the last of the last days. Uh, uh, I can't see us having much more, much more days uh, uh, ahead of us, much more generations, much more decades, uh, uh, because this whole world's turning more and more wicked. Uh, it's turning more and more violent, uh, and all the signs of the time are that Jesus will be coming for his church. We see the season. Now notice the separating. 
says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. There is a separation going to happen. There are going to be some who will depart from the faith. Jude told us to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, uh, my dear friends, there was a time not that long ago uh, that regardless of denomination, they all had the same book. Uh, and can I say they would preach the same gospel? Uh, but we're living in a day and age uh, where there's many churches, even so-called Baptist churches, that no longer uh, earnestly contend for the faith. Amen. And we see that there were would be some departing or separating from the faith. Now notice, if you will, why? Notice the seduction. It says, uh, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It amazes me why people will go to a church today. There are some people will go to, the church, to a church because they enjoy the entertainment. Hmm? Now, I thank God for folks that have talent. we got a lot of folks in our church that can sing, folks that can play instruments, and thank God for talent. But that's not entertainment. Amen. They are using their talent to praise the Lord. Sure. To give back to the Lord because He has blessed them with a talent. But there are many folks that will go to church because of the entertainment. Can I say the church is not a nightclub? The church is to be holy. The church is a place where we reverence and honor and glorify the Lord. Uh, Amen. There are a lot of folks that will go to a church because of the personality of the preacher. Amen. Well, let me help you with something. It's not about the personality of the preacher. It's about the Word of God and what he's preaching. Yeah. There's a lot of folks... Uh, that if he's got a good personality and he throws in a joke every now and then uh, and uh, he says things that appeal to their intellect, he's their guy. Mm, it amazes me how many so-called preachers don't preach God's book anymore. They preach a lot of philosophy, mm, but they don't preach the book. And can I say the devil has been crafty to seduce people away from the truth? Mm. Can I say there's a lot of people that are in a church where the preacher uh, doesn't know how to get a hold of God and he's, he's so boring that even paint gets bored on the walls. And people will leave because they see something that is charismatic. Hmm? Uh, the devil knows how to be sly and how to seduce people. He did Eve, did he not? And there are a lot of folks that will depart from the faith, uh, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. It amazes me when somebody leaves a good church. What caused them to leave? Hmm? And it's amazing the excuses they'll say. Well, we just felt left to leave. Well, where did God lead you to? Well, we're going to go look. Well, didn't Brother Phil just testify that everything goes good when we follow Jesus? And if Jesus is leading you somewhere, he will take you somewhere. He don't leave you, lead you to leave a good church to go out and wander in the wilderness. Are you listening? Huh? It amazes me that they feel left led to leave but they're not being led anywhere now who's leading them good. who they listening to good. let me just say this and I don't mean to be ugly and unkind but I'm going to be ugly and unkind can I say something God never hurts one church to help another church sure. let me say that again God never hurts one church to help another church in other words God won't take people out of one church in order to help another church that's struggling somewhere else down the line. Are you listening? Yeah, amen. Now listen, a lot of churches end up struggling because somewhere along the line they didn't follow God. 
they got a preacher that's not following God or the people put in a man that God didn't ordain for him to be or something, God's hand's not on it and it's falling apart. Now listen, I have no problem if somebody runs from a church where the preacher quits preaching the truth. You ought to run from him. But if it's a good church, God's not going to lead you away just because you don't like how they do things. Boy, that went over like a lead balloon. Hmm? I ain't even got to the message yet, Brother Brian. Uh, can I help you with something? God never asks any of our opinion on how he wants to do things. He just does it the way he wants to do it because he knows what's sure. best. That's right. And just because we don't agree with what God's doing, there's no reason for us to leave. Sure. Hmm? But there are a lot of people. They don't like Miss Melissa sitting on the front row. I don't blame her. I don't like her there either, but you know, she is. And so what, what are you going to do about it? No, I'm just always real leery of folks that feel like they're being led from a good church and they never land anywhere. Amen. And if I had time, I could, t I could start naming names of folks that felt led to leave and they're nowhere tonight and their families are a mess. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sure. So who led them away? They might have been seduced. Yeah. Can I say something? Boy, I can't get off of this. Let me go preach to Marcy. The Lord is omnipotent, all-powerful. Yes, he's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere all the time. Yes. Now, you listen real well. Mary's not listening. Let me go over here. I am listening. Now, here's the thing. We have this mentality that we know what God is, but we have this mentality that the devil's just almost as powerful. And that there's a great match between God and the devil and we're in the middle and at the end we're just going to barely eke out in victory because God's going to just barely win this thing out. The devil's utterly powerless before God. Sure, He isn't omnipotent. He isn't omnipresent. He isn't omniscient. Matter of fact, the devil don't know anything going on in your life until you tell him. Now, if you're at the, at, at the Cracker Barrel you and your precious family and you're there with Elf and Smurfette and you and Elf start talking and all of a sudden you say you know what I don't I, I, I don't like it when Brother Doug comes off the pulpit when he's preaching <laughs> well heaven help you I spend more time off the pulpit than on the pulpit but if you say something like that who do you think is listening so who do you think every time Brother Doug comes off the pulpit is going to put a, put a burr in your saddle by whispering in your ear saying, look, there he is again. Look at him again. Look at him again. Look at him again. Look at him again. And all of a sudden, the devil's going to use that to seduce you. Right. Sure. That's right. So who's doing the leading? Come on now. now, that's a very, you know, ignorant illustration. But you'd be amazed at how many people... We'll go to dinner, go fellowship with somebody, and all of a sudden they start talking about something they don't like. And all of a sudden, every time they come to church, that's all they see. Who do you think does that? Come on. Amen. <laughs> yep. yes. Okay, we're on, we on the same page. Some depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. Yep. That's right. Now notice, if you will, they're speaking. They're in the faith. They depart from the faith. They've been seduced away, and now all of a sudden they're somewhere else. Look what they do in verse 2. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. Hmm? You know what hypocrisy is? That's where you say one thing and do another. It's a double standard. Well, what happens now all of a sudden they're liars. They've been seduced, and guess who's the father of all lies? The devil. And what's the first thing he teaches them to do? Start lying. Become a hypocrite. Start telling everybody why you left the church. And start living a double life. And start running down this person, that person. And start making up stuff. That's what they do. Because they have to justify why they're not there. They've already started listening to the devil and he'll, he'll load their boat. Hmm? And then notice, if you will, 
their seared conscience. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. You know what that means? That means once they have justified why they have left and they've listened to the devil so much and they started lying and living a life of his hypocrisy, all of a sudden they really start believing it. Having your conscience seared with a hot iron simply means that you become insensible to it or numb. It no longer bothers you to be a liar. It no longer bothers you to be a hypocrite. It no longer bothers you to tell others the very lies you believed. And you've believed it so much it becomes real in your life. Yeah. I know that's a lot of information. But I'm interested where he says giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. I want to preach for a little while tonight on doctrine of devils. Doctrines of devils. Now, let me qualify this. When you read that and you get to thinking about that, and it says doctrines of devils, you immediately start thinking about false doctrine. Now, if, if you, I don't know why you wouldn't be in, in this church, but if you are not uh, equipped to understand or familiar with the term doctrine, a lot of people get, uh, get real scared or nervous when you start talking about, oh, we're going to talk about doctrine. A lot of churches, they say, well, don't talk about doctrine. Don't teach on doctrine. Don't, we don't want to offend anybody. Well, doctrine simply is the preaching or teaching of the Word of God. Sure. When you rightly divide the Scriptures and teach them properly, you're teaching doctrine. Yeah. And the doctrine we stand on and all the things we stand on comes from the Bible. And he said, but they're going to be seduced to believe doctrines of devils. Now, there's a difference between false doctrine and doctrines of devils. Uh, 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 can I say false doctrine uh, is folks that just don't believe the Bible correctly. Uh, uh, folks that do not believe in the security of the believer, eternal security, they believe in a false doctrine. They believe you can lose your salvation. Uh, folks that believe that you have to be baptized in order to be saved, uh, they believe a false doctrine. Uh, what do you do with the thief on the cross? He wasn't baptized. Uh, 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 there, then there are folks who believe that you have to speak in tongues uh, in order to be saved. Now, uh, uh, those of us that know how to rightly divide the Bible know that God did use tongues, uh, other languages, uh, to prove that the apostles were of Him. Uh, but Paul said, when that which is perfect shall come, that which is in part shall be done away with. And he said, tongues shall cease. What was he talking about? When the Word of God would be completed, uh, we would have no need for external gifts and outward gifts. Uh, we'd have the complete Word of God which lies in our, our absolute final authority. Uh, and we understand uh, uh, we don't speak in tongues. I don't need to speak in another language. We all speak hillbilly, huh? Right. But there are some who say you've got to speak in another tongue to be saved. They're teaching a false doctrine. There are those that uh, uh, teach you got to uh, take of the Eucharist and uh, uh, drink of the wine in a mass service. That's false doctrine. There's a difference between false doctrine and doctrine of devil. Now let me just say this. I don't really like throwing off on other denominations because i got a 24-hour day job trying to straighten out Baptists. Huh? But listen, most of them, that's what they've been taught. They don't know any better. They've not been taught how to rightly divide the Scriptures. And so we don't throw off on them. And certainly if they come and ask questions, I'll take them through the Bible and show them. And I have been able to do that over the years with folks that were raised to believe one thing and didn't believe uh, and didn't understand. And you can take them in the Scriptures, uh, show them what the Bible says, and you can see the light bulb turn off. And, uh, and they say, yeah, that makes sense to me. Because they want to know the truth. They've just been taught wrong. Listen, uh, 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 every one of us was probably taught something that wasn't exactly right. But hallelujah, we got the Word of God. Amen. Hmm. There's a difference between people that haven't been taught right and folks who have been seduced and have learned doctrine of devils. Second mm, Peter 2 1 says, But there were false prophets who also among the people, even as there are false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies. 
I want to deal with these doctrines of devils. False doctrine just teaches people to believe in wrong things. Doctrines of devils is designed to bring harm to people. There's a difference. You say, what are you saying, preacher? You know, there can people be saved and don't believe in eternal security. They're still going to heaven. There are people who are saved, who have been taught uh, 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 that you've got to speak in tongues. They're still saved. They're going to go to heaven. There are people who are saved, uh, who have been taught you've got to be baptized to be saved. They're still going to heaven. Doctrines of devil is designed so people don't get saved and there's no hope for them going to heaven. It's about bringing harm to people. Now listen, folks that have the Bible and they believe wrongly, but they're born again, they're going to lose rewards in heaven for not believing right. Because they're going to be judged by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. But folks that don't believe God and believe a doctrine of the devil, they're going to die and go to hell. So doctrines of devil, and even folks that have been saved who get caught up in doctrines of devils, doctrines of devils seek to bring harm to people. Can I say, first of all, the doctrines of devils causes physical harm. Throughout the scriptures, wherever you read about devil worship or doctrines established by the devil, it always seeks to bring physical harm to people. You find in Mount Carmel, in 1 Kings chapter 18, they cut themselves. You, uh, did I not say we're living in the last days? Yeah. Yes, sir. Do you know how popular and prevalent it is among young people today to cut themselves? Right. It's throughout society. Can I say we have a young lady that was uh, in our church for quite some time. She used to sing uh, in the youth choir, used to be in the youth group. Uh, uh, but can I say that I know from a fact uh, uh, because her family uh, uh, were led away and seduced away and have never been in a good church since, uh, uh, she has posted uh, and shown pictures where she has cut herself and she's a part of that now. I say it's not the will of God for you to physically hurt yourself. Amen. God doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but of love and peace and a sound mind. It goes against your very nature to want to hurt yourself. Most of the time we like ourselves too much. But the doctrine of devil always seeks to bring physical harm to people. You see some of these uh, uh, documentaries and some of these shows on TV uh, 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 where these, I call them cults, uh, and some of them have Baptists on the door uh, 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 where these people are so mean-spirited uh, and you find out that the men beat the women and uh, 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 they rape uh, young girls to have babies and do all this stuff. That's all doctrines of devils. Amen. It's not of God. Jesus Christ didn't hurt anybody. But he showed compassion and mercy and grace to everybody. A doctrine of devil always seeks to cause physical harm. It's abusive. Could I say this? It not only causes physical harm, it causes psychological harm. Physical abuse is terrible. There is no excuse for it. Matter of fact, I'm not much anymore. I'm getting old. I'm right behind Miss Marcy headed to the nursing home. But you, you, show, you, you let me see a man hit a woman and there's something inside of me that turns and my blood boils. Hmm? Amen. I've been actually told one one time, you feel like hitting someone, come and hit me, big boy. Hmm? There's just something that, that sickens me about physical abuse. But can I say... And I do not mean to discount that. But bruises heal. Psychological or mental abuse never goes away. Amen. And doctrines of devils seek to cause psychological harm. Doctrines of devil will tell you you're worthless. And that no one will love you. And that no one will care for you. And that you are useless. 
and it seeks to beat you down and to put you into submission and to cause you to feel uh, 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 like you're not even a human being. Uh, my dear friends, that is not Jesus. Uh, hey, the old songwriter Dr. Charles Wago uh, said, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Uh, hey, Jesus loves you. Uh, he's loved you with an everlasting love. Uh, Jesus gave himself for you. Uh, you are not worthless. Uh, God bankrupt heaven just for you. Uh, you're more, worth more than the whole world to God. Uh, and friend, uh, the doctrines of devils seek to psychologically harm people. Sure. Amen. Did I not say we're living in the last days? Yes, sir. Can I say as a pastor the last 25 years, can I say this, that most of the counseling that we've had to do, my wife and I with folks, tends to deal with mental abuse. What folks have been exposed to and told and, and uh, uh, threatened with. Boy, I thank God for Jesus. Because the only one that can help break the bondage of mental abuse is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Mm -mm. Doctrines of devils. They're real. They're prevalent. And folks who are uh, giving way to seducing spirits and listening to those lies uh, will be drawn away and end up with doctrines of devils and they will control and ruin their lives. It's a terrible, terrible thing. Doctrines of devils, are, they cause physical harm. They cause psychological harm. Can I say this? They call positional, cause positional harm. They will affect your standing and your reputation. Amen. Have you ever seen somebody that just was like bigger than life and all of a sudden you don't see them for a while and it seems like they've just gotten involved in something you don't understand and all of a sudden you see them and they're a shell of what they used to be? Yeah. Sure. Have you ever seen somebody that was prevalent in society and all of a sudden some things came out on them and, and they lost it all? How many stories do we hear of, of people of renowned and now they live under a bridge begging for money to get their next high? Doctrines of devils will strip you of your position. Can I say not only in society, not only as a husband or wife, but we're talking about folks that departed from the faith. It harms their position with God. Brother Clint sang that song little as much when God is in it. Can I help you something? We can take on the world as long as we're right with God. Amen. When your fellowship and your position with God is in right standing, there's nothing the devil can throw at you to defeat you. Amen. Oh, you'll take some blows. But like that song, the old ship is high, you may be bent and battered, but you're still sailing. But you show me somebody that is led away by a seducing spirit and starts believing in the doctrines of devils, I'll show you somebody that won't even resemble a Christian. I have known people that once stood for the same Bible that we stand for, stood for the same doctrines that we embrace, had a touch of God in their life, to get so far from God that when you talk to them and you see them and you listen to them and you, you, you look at what their life's become, they don't even resemble anybody that ever knew God. It is a dangerous thing to give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, I'll tell you, that slick devil makes a lot of sense. But the just don't walk, walk by logic. We don't walk by what makes sense. We walk by faith. Yeah. Right. Hmm. Boy, I could start naming preachers that used to have a lot more power of God than I've ever had. And tonight, they're not even in church. Because they gave heed to seducing spirits. 
You know why I won't let you thank me for the message? Because number one, it's not my message. God gave it to me. But I've seen some where they started listening to the flattery words and the devil used that to seduce them down a path that they're not even in the pulpit anymore. Mm -hmm. Doctrines of devils will cause physical harm, psychological harm, positional harm. Can I say this? Doctrines of devils cause propitiational harm. It hurts the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is our propitiation. He is our mercy seat. He is the one that saved us. He's the one that gives, gives us the relationship with God. We're robed in His righteousness. Uh, we've been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. Uh, we have been justified by faith. Uh, we are uh, who we are in God through Christ. Amen. But when those that have named the name of Christ and served Christ and lived for Christ all of a sudden have been seduced away and give heed to doctrines of devil, it hurts the cause of Christ. How many of us have tried to witness to somebody and they'll bring up somebody that used to stand for truth and no longer do? Because doctrines of devils always seek to destroy the things of God. I got good news, Brother Rod. We win. I've read the back of the book. But I sure would that everybody that started in the boat stayed in the boat. Hmm? It hurts the cause of Christ every time a child of God goes bad. It's a black eye to Jesus. You remember what God said in Genesis 3.15 when the serpent had beguiled Eve and God judged the serpent, knocked the legs off of him, and told him he was going to spend the rest of his life in, in the belly and he's going to put enmity between uh, the serpent seed and the woman seed. That's why I got a real problem with anybody handling snakes. They didn't put enmity between them. This is what he told the devil. He talk, he's talking about the seed of the woman. He's talking about, in Genesis 3, 15, is the first prophecy that Jesus was coming, being born of a virgin. He said this to the devil. He said, you'll bruise his heel, but he'll bruise your head. On Calvary, Jesus bruised the sorry, no good devil. When Jesus got up on that third and pointed morning, uh, 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 that Easter Sunday morning, it bruised the devil. Can I say every time uh, somebody gets saved, it bruises the devil. Every time somebody overcomes and trusts Jesus by faith uh, 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 in their personal Christian walk, it bruises the devil. Uh, but listen, every time the devil causes one of God's youngins to fail, it bruises Christ. Doctrines of devils cause harm. Christian was just telling me this. He's, he's down there at the police academy. He's hanging out with a bunch of redneck cops. He comes home we have to teach him English again. Some of them guys from down there in Middlesbrough and stuff, they don't speak English. But he said down there somewhere in eastern Kentucky, some of them have already been on the force. He said they have to go in them snake handling churches. Said one of them, the pastor's already died, and his son handled the serpent, and the serpent bit his ear, and his ear withered up, and he about died. He said, and they go in there, and them snakes all on the ground. He said, they just shoot them. <laughs> Tell me that's not a doctrine of devils when people start dying in the church house. Are you listening? Yeah. Now, here's my philosophy. Don't go in there and shoot. Burn the whole place down. I mean, if they're housing snakes, burn it down. That's the best way to do it, you know? I should have looked it up but Luke tells us that we'll have the power to tread on scorpions and, 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 and take up serpents Luke tells us that and that's what they, that's where they base all that snake handling on but they don't read the next verse the very next verse says notwithstanding don't rejoice in that these spirits are subject unto you but rather rejoice in that your name's written in heaven. You can have the snakes. I'm going to heaven. My name's on the roll. That's good enough. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. Eastern Kentucky nut jobs. Huh? I can have them. 
Some of you about to faint. How many of you remember Cash Amberg? You remember him on commercials? Save cash with cash. You got to be old to remember cash. Remember Cash Aunt D. Ambergy had a little tractor store up there in Lebanon, Ohio. And boy, when they had the gospel concert, cash would show up at all the big gospel concerts. And everybody, there's Cash Ambergy. What a blessing. He's hoping to give him some money. He ain't giving you no money. You want to hear Paul Harvey's the rest of the story? My Aunt Lynn sitting right there. She'll, she'll testify this. Her mama, my grandma was raised in the same hometown as, as Cash Hamburgy. Now, first of all, he's sorry as the day is long because when our men went to World War II to fight, he used religious preference to not go and fight. He stayed home and made all his money while all the men were over there fighting. So, first of all, he's sorry. He's a sorry American and a sorry Christian. God, uh, if you read the Old Testament, God promoted a lot of war. God told him, go kill everything. Kill the animals and all. Huh? But anyway, old Cash, he, he was one of them snake handling churches down there. His first wife, she got bit by one of them stupid things. And he wouldn't take her to the doctor. Wouldn't get her medical help. Kept telling her if she had the faith, God would heal her. And he let her lay up in the bed and wither up and die, my dear friends. That's your Cash Hamburgy. Boy, he's a blessing, isn't he? Huh? Mary Lou, that wasn't his first wife. Huh? He moved up north where they don't have snakes. Are you listening? Hmm? I don't know why I said all that, but I did. There's a doctrine of devils. They cause harm to the cause of Christ. Hmm? I guarantee you there's people down there in them coal mines and they won't go to them snakes. They say, oh, people are crazy. I'd be right there with them saying, Amen, brother, they're crazy. But how many people have died and they said, well, they didn't have the faith. How many, how many of them people? How many, how many of those folks do you think have really hurt the cause of Christ? Hmm? Yeah. By the way, you go to snake handling churches? I'm just going to tell you, Phil, in case you ever show up in one. <laughs> they got pictures of people all on the walls. That's the people who didn't have the faith. I don't know why we got on all that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Mary quit handling snakes. That's what I'm trying to get you to. <laughs> the last thing about doctrines of devils. I mean it causes physical harm. Causes psychological harm. Causes positional harm. Causes uh, propitiational harm. But can I say this about doctrines of devils? It causes permanent harm. Now listen, God can recover people out of anywhere. God can certainly forgive sin and God can, uh, can certainly restore. But if anybody has ever been bit by the doctrine of devils, they're never truly whole again. They'll bear those scars the rest of their life. But you remember that little phrase... Their conscience is seared with a hot iron. You don't ever see many recovered out of doctrines of devils because deep down in their mind they've convinced themselves they're okay. Doctrines of devils cause permanent harm. Those who have left the faith and been bitten by doctrines of devil, if they were saved, they'll lose rewards in heaven. They'll have a miserable life here, and they'll lose rewards in the life to come. But the real danger is those people who trip over their lives and die and go to hell. It causes permanent harm. You've heard me say, the devil's got a bullseye on each and every one of us. But who do you think he'd want to take down more than anybody else in the church? The pastor. If it hit the community that I fell to sin, do you think it would affect the church? It sure would. Hmm? 
We've been in this community 20 years. There's a lot of people associate us with Emmanuel Baptist Church that's never walked through the doors. But there's a lot of people who's come through the doors. How many people do you think it would hurt? More than we'd know. How many of those precious children on the other side of the building do you think it would affect them? When they got to reasoning, they got to thinking, well, God wasn't big enough to keep Brother Doug. How can he help me? Hmm? Huh? Little Lena every now and then will talk to me. She likes me more than she'll let on. But little Junebug's starting to wave to me. She's starting to have, you know. These children have been taught that Brother Doug's the pastor. He's God's man. He stands in the gap and makes up the hedge for us and our family. He preaches God's word so we can know the truth from, from heaven. And what do you think it does to those precious little minds if they say, here, well, Brother Doug, he's, he's no longer a preacher. I'm, I'm here to tell you, it causes permanent harm. Amen. I've said all that, say this tonight. Don't be seduced. Be spirit led. And the spirit of God will always lead you through the scriptures. He'll never lead you by your feelings or your emotion. Your emotions and your feelings change. I'm just now starting to get over the gank. I still feel a little bit in my throat. When you don't feel good, that has nothing to do with your position with Christ. Hmm? Your emotions change. Mercy, we've been in services where we start out to, we're smiling and rejoicing, then we get uh, uh, broken hearted and we're weeping, then we go back to rejoicing. I mean, your emotions can change even in a service. But the Lord's changeth not, and His word's forever settled in heaven. Don't be seduced, be spirit led. And the Spirit of God will always lead you and guide you. In truth, isn't that what Jesus has said about the Comforter? He'll lead and guide you into all truth. And when you're following him, the doctrines of the devils will never harm you. I'm glad we serve a loving Savior who doesn't seek to harm us. He seeks to deliver us. And I'm glad he's given us his truth that we can overcome and that we can have the right relationship with God that God intended for us. So tonight, I want you to be aware. We're living in the days of the doctrines of devils and seducing spirits. Amen. That's why you can talk to somebody you might have known real well and you hadn't seen them for a while and you talk to them they start talking stuff and you're thinking, what in the world ever happened to them? They were seduced and they believed doctrines of devils. When you're confronted with somebody that speak lies and hypocrisy, and you know they don't believe that. I once was confronted by a guy who was trying to tell me something, I mean, off the wall was real. And I said, wait a second, you're talking to me. I know the Bible. They believe it because their conscience is seared. When you're confronted with somebody like that, you need to understand it's the doctrines of devils. And really, they're hurting. Because that's what the doctrines of the devil does. It causes harm. So you need to point them back to Jesus. And you need to pray for them to get back to Jesus. Because he's the only one that can break the bondage that the doctrine of devils causes. Friends, you don't have to look very far. And you'll find somebody who's been seduced and given heed to doctrines of devils. Let's all stand Brother Clint, get a song of invitation on your guitar. Maybe tonight you just know somebody that's hurting because of some false doctrine. Maybe you want to come pray for them. Maybe tonight you want to come and thank the Lord for delivering you. Maybe tonight you want to come and just ask God to continue to put a hedge of protection about us. Maybe tonight you want to come and tell the Lord how much you love him. I don't know. But the altar's open. There's folks in false doctrine and folks in doctrines of devils. Maybe you want to come and thank God for the truth. Folks are coming. He's getting a song ready. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we sure do love you. Thank you for the truth. 
Second and third John, that's all it does is exalt you because of the truth. And God, we're thankful for truth. Lord, sometimes the truth hurts, but it never harms. And so, Father, I pray that you'd help us to embrace the truth, help us to be spirit-led, and help us, Lord, to recover some who have been seduced to believe the doctrine of the devils. Help us, Lord, to be a light to those who have believed false doctrine. And God, help us to make a difference. Now, God, help folks here tonight. Some are in the altar. You know what they're praying about. I pray your will would be done. Lord, if there's anybody in our midst that's unsaved, I pray for them tonight. Lord, you'd touch them and help them realize their need of salvation. Lord, I pray they'd come and trust Christ. Lord, there are others that, Lord, may have, uh, Lord, suffered harm in their life. I pray for Obama Gilead that, Lord, would help them. Lord, that would strengthen them. Lord, would give them peace and give them hope. God, do a work around here, and God, help us to be instruments used of God to help somebody else. Bless now. Speak to hearts. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.